Welcome to another video. I got this question in an email and I gave it a shot. And firstly, I used my instinct to try to figure out what the answer would be. I clearly know that this is going to converge. How do I know? Because you see the numerator here is one. The numerator is here is the nth root of two, right? So depending on what n is, let's say n is a very big number, let's say 1000, then the 1000th root of 2 is very close to 1. The same thing here, the same thing here. So it's more or less having 1 plus 1 plus 1 n number of times um, divided by n. As n goes to infinity, I know the numbers on top would be less than the numbers will be less than n, so it's more likely to converge, right? And because it's less than n and n is going to infinity, I should be getting zero, right? My only problem is the number of terms, the minimum this can be is one, so it's like adding one an infinite number of times divided by infinity, so it's an infinity over infinity situation, which I cannot really tell is gonna give me one, or zero or does not exist. I don't know, I don't think it is. So that's the problem with this problem. So my instinct did not help me, but calculus did. Let's get into the video. Based on what I thought about this problem, I would try to rewrite this and see if I can make some infinite series out of it, okay? Well, that's what I thought when I first started the problem. So I'm going to say that this is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of, you see, this 1 is the same thing as the nth root of 2 raised to power 0. You see that? So um, this adjustment, this is what they wrote as 1, so this is to power 1 power 2, power 3, all the way to n as the exponent. So instead of writing this, I can just write it in the exponential form. So I could say that this is 2 raised to power um, 0 over n. This is plus 2 raised to power 1 over n, plus 2 raised to power 2 over n, plus we can continue to 2 raised to power, we don't know, well this becomes n over n, well I can write it that way, n over n, which would be 2 raised to power 1, okay? But I'm just going to leave it this way because there is a series, okay, or a sequence on top, there's also um, a constant under, so let's leave it that way, everything divided by n. So if you look at what we have here, this is the sum of terms. These terms are just changing. It's only the top that's changing, right? So we can write this in a summation form and say that this is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of, see this top part, we can write as the sum of 2 raised to power Let's call it i over n, but i begins from 0 and stops at n divided by n. Okay, let me rewrite this. So another way of presenting this question is this. But this is more like you're writing the Riemann sum, like the sums of all the rectangles that you have split. Let me show you. This is the same thing as saying this is the limit as n goes to infinity of, you have the sum from i equals 0 to n of 2 raised to power i over n multiplied by 1 over n. Now, this is a Riemann sum for a particular integral. Remember the definition of the integral? Okay, because this is the 
most accurate and predictable way to evaluate this limit. Now, see what, I'm, what I mean by this. If you get the integral from a to b of f of x dx, from the definition of the integral, we know that this is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of, um, we're going to have the limit of the sum, we're going to have this sum, okay, from i equals, let's say, 0 to n, or it depends on what we call it. It can be start from 1, okay, let's say from, it doesn't matter, i equals, let's say from 1, the number of rectangles you're going to be using, um, uh, which is going to be f of xi delta x. Now I'm trying to be sure that I have what I have here. This is what happens. This xi, note, note that this xi, if we're using the right end, um, if we're using the right end point, is going to be a plus delta x times i. Or well, i is the number of times that you have there, okay? So this is going to be the beginning of your integration, and the ending of your integration will be all the i's that you have, the multiple i's, okay? I'm just going to leave that for, for now. And then you have your delta x is always b minus a over n. And this is where we're going to start. Now, b minus a over n looks like 1 over n. So the entire interval that we're integrating over is just 1, because that's usually what, is, what this is, the entire integral uh, interval you're integrating over. So it is convenient, if you look at what we have here, to say, based on what we have here, we're integrating beginning from 0 to 1. That would be a good assumption to make, that you're going from 0 to 1, okay? The interval of your integration. Okay, so we can translate this. B minus A is the same thing as you can say 1 minus 0 over N. Now, how do I know it's 1 minus 0 and not 2 minus 1? It's because if we're using the right end point, look here, 2 raised to power I over N is basically, look, delta X times I is 1 over N times I here. You see, that is your xi. The variable that's changing is just 1 over n times i. So it means that there is no a. The a is 0, which means that this has to be 0. So what we're saying that this integral here, look, the limit as x goes to infinity of this sum from i equals 0 to n of 2 raised to power i over n times 1 over n is the same thing as the integral from 0 to 1 of this function. Remember that if you want to know what the function is, just look at this. This sum is the function of xi. But xi is this. Which in this case, if you compare this, so the function is definitely 2 raised to power some variable. That variable is i times 1 over n. It's always this. So it's 0 plus delta x. So delta x is 1 over n, you see that, times i. So this is to the power of x dx. This is the Riemann sum of this integral. I had to pay careful attention to each of these details, and because if you want to write this as a Riemann sum, this is what you're going to be writing. This, you get this. So the answer to all of this crazy stuff we've been doing is just the integral of 2 to the x from 0 to 1. Side note. Side note. Uh-oh, that's a terrible side note line, but that's how it goes. So this is really what we're working from here. You go here. But you have to be able to see it. Okay? 
Now, I know that there might just be a theorem you could have used that will tell you that you could have made this a variable and then do your u substitution and you still end up with something like this, but this is nicer for us because with this, we know that if we integrate 2 to the x, we're going to get 2 to the x over ln x, evaluated from 0 to 1. If you plug in 1, you're going to get 2 to the 1, so this is going to be 2 to the 1 over ln, oh sorry, ln 2, come on, over ln 2, minus 2 to the 0 over ln 2. Well, it looks like that's going to give us 2 minus 1, which is 1 over natural log of 2. And that is the answer to this limit problem. The Riemann sum from the definition of the integral. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.